Okay, hi everyone. I'm Dave Bergman, uh, Vice President of IPC, and I've been at IPC a very, very long time. And I wanted to give you an opportunity today to get a little bit more understanding about how a printed circuit board assembly is made. Now, it's a very, very complex process and involves a, a great deal of capital equipment. But there are things that you can use, and we have some things at IPC headquarters to show you and demonstrate to you today about uh, how to build a printed circuit assembly. The first thing that you need is a Gerber file, okay? Gerber file has the data that comes from the, uh, uh, from the customer that goes, gives the uh, information that describes the printed circuit board. Actually, that's a joke. But you can have data that's sent with a CD or a memory stick. And essentially, then you get what's seen here on the laptop you have the circuit pattern. Circuit pattern which is going to the, conduct the electricity on the circuit board to give the function that the customer wants. And so this is a viewer tool that allows uh, to see the data that's sent from the customer. So now you've got your data from your customer. You have to say, well, what's, what am I going to build my printed circuit board out of? We're going to start with some laminate. The basics for printed circuit board laminate is copper clad laminate, okay? Now, we don't have any copper, so let's see what we've got here. Okay, so we don't have any copper foil, but we've got aluminum foil. Now, essentially, it's the same. If you go to a laminator and look at this, it's just as copper as opposed to aluminum. So we're gonna just uh, use your imagination and consider this to be copper foil. Okay, so now, You've got to have, red, or you have to have fiberglass. The basic structural portion of the circuit board is fiberglass. Now we don't have any fiberglass here, so oh, oh, we got this. We're going to use Wonder Bread. So here is our fiberglass. Okay, so that's our structure. It gives structure as well as electrical isolation. So it's our insulator. Okay, now resin. Resin also provides some very important function. Moisture resistance, electrical resistance, also some rigidity in there. So we now need some resin. It's epoxy. Just I mean, if, you, if you look at an epoxy glass copper clad laminate, it's very much similar to what they make boats from. Much more uh, fine, re refined, but essentially the same kind of thing. So we need a resin system. We don't have any of that, but we have GIF. We're going to apply our resin system and we put it onto our fiberglass. Now at the, at the, uh, at the laminator they actually soak it in the, uh, in the resin system. But we don't have that so we're just going to at this point applying it on the outside. Okay, so and then I wrap it around and I have my copper clad laminate. Okay, now, it's just kind of wrapped there at this point, and you really need to do some things to increase the bond. So what they end up doing is the copper is generally uh, treated in some way to give it teeth, so it can actually bite into the fiberglass. And they have to press it. They use a very either heavy roller or a lamination press. Now, a lamination press can weigh several tons and huge steel and, and very large. And so we don't have one of those at IPC, but we've got the next best thing. <laughs> this is my lamination press. And so we have a pressing process, and we're going to put heat and pressure onto our copper clad laminate so that it is cured and highly pressed. And so uh, I get good stability in the laminate when it's done. So I have a set time that I'm doing this, but essentially I'm curing this while I'm pressing it and having good bond so that when the circuits are made, they won't fall off. Okay, so now I have my copper clad laminate. We'll need a couple other pieces for our copper clad laminate for later demonstration, so I'm going to make a few more. Okay. So I now have the basics, and the circuit board manufacturer bu uh, buys this material from the copper clad laminate supplier. So 
I'm now at the circuit board manufacturer. I get my incoming material, and I have to image it. I have to image it to provide the circuit pattern as we saw on the laptop. Now, generally, that's done in an etching process where the copper foil is removed and then the circuits are... Oh, I need to remove the copper circuits. So, in most cases, this is done in a uh, chemical process, a chemical etching. That removes. Now, I don't have one of those at the office here, but I do have our bucket O processing. And so, what happens here is when I go to, I put my image on the outside, this is done with some, uh, some photo uh, sensitive material that keeps the fluid from etching off certain portions. So I'm resisting, I have a resist on there, and so when I dip this in here, the parts that I don't have covered get eaten away, and the parts that there are still there are left. And so I just dip that and dip that. Now, obviously I don't have a chemical etching process, so again you're going to use my imag your imagination, so now I'm going to create my circuit pattern here, cheese whiz, and so I draw my pattern here, and I draw here. You will not see it as good as on the board or in the uh, computer panel, but here is my insulation resistance pattern, and there you go. There's my circuit board. Okay. Now, this is one inner layer. So if I have my inner layer, I want to make a multi-layer board. And so I have one. I have another one. It's going to make another layer. And so I've got my pattern on this. Okay. And so now I have two layers. I want to make a multi-layer board. So I now need bonding ply. I need to bond these two together. And what do I use? I use my resin system and some more fiberglass. This is a uh, this is something called pre-preg. So a little bit of fiberglass, a little bit of resin system, and then I'm going to take that and lay that in between these two. Okay, and now you know what's next. I got to break out the lamination press again. So, now again, high temperature, high pressure, sometimes under vacuum, but again, I've got to get these layers to bond and uh, in the building of the multi-layer. So again, my lamination press is doing that. You can see I've got some squeeze out, which is very typical. So, fortunately, it's not the circuits that are coming out, it's the resin, and that gets trimmed off later. So now, after the resin process, after the resin is cured in my lamination press, I'm ready for subsequent processing. So, what I have here is our manufactured multi-layer board. But the layers have no connection between the two, and so that has to be done at this point. So, generally what is done is actually it's the drilling process. The drilling process uses a very expensive piece of equipment with, with a very large and heavy, very precise multi-head drill with granite. We don't have any of that here at the IPC, but we do have an 18 volt DeWalt drill. And so we're going to do our drilling so you, all the way through the multi-layer board in a very controlled fashion. And I'm making the connection to the internal circuitry to the outside layer. Okay? So, that's essentially the drilling process. And so now I have a series of holes in my multi-layer board, and I have to get continuity. I have to get a connection to those two. And I'm going to do copper plating at that point. Copper plating, I need my bucket of processing. And so now I'm going to add copper. I'm not going to take it away. I'm going to add copper, and I'm going to take my multi-layer board, and I dip it in there, and the copper is deposited in the holes, and I get my continuity to my multi-layer board. Okay, I can also then etch the surface to get my circuitry. So I know I need to create my circuitry on the surface. 
And so for that, I'm going to make my circuits on the surface. So I've etched it in the bucket of processing, and I've got my surface circuitry. And so now I have my completed assembly. My, sorry, my completed multi-layer board, which is now ready. And if you're really doing this properly and professionally, you've got something that looks like this that goes out to the customer. This is then sold to someone who wants to buy printed circuit boards, either an OEM that's building uh, computers or, or other electronic devices, or the contract assembly or the EMS industries. And we'll talk a little bit about what they do at their uh, plant. If we're going to go and build a, an assembly, I need some component devices. So component devices are pretty expensive and we don't have any of those here at IPC, so we're going to have to do something different. Chip components, like resistors and capacitors, there's lots of those, so we've got your basic jujubes. And larger component devices, uh, ball grid arrays and such, well, we don't have any of those here either, so we're going to use bananas. So, our larger component devices, and actually we did this like the cooking show, I have some already prepared up in, so we've got there. So, our larger devices, oh, and you have to be careful because occasionally you get some counterfeit ones, and so we just throw those to the side. We don't want the counterfeit, we want to use the real ones. And so, larger devices, we're going to take those and put them on the board, and the smaller discrete devices, we're going to take those and put those in the board. Okay, so when I get my circuit assembly, I'm going to put them down onto the copper pattern, the circuit patterns that's there. Now, in most cases with the surface mounting process, we use solder paste. Tin lead solder paste, lead free solder paste, put on the surface of the board. Now, we don't have any of that either here, so we're going to use, oops, Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. But, uh, we're, we've got some of this. So, solder paste is actually very, like toothpaste, very sticky, and you're going to put it down. Most times, either it can be very directly uh, deposited or most instances screen printed and so they do it in a uh, stencil process and so I'm going to put some solder paste down by hand because we don't have the fancy equipment to do that here at IPC and so then I'm going to take using my very expensive uh, uh, assembly equipment I'm just going to use it by hand but if I had very expensive assembly equipment, I could do it much faster with much higher accuracy. And my smaller devices are going to be placed into here. And then, when they're all in the solder paste, my assembly is then ready to go through reflow. I have to take the solder paste, put it under high temperature, uh, either uh, uh, vapor, either vapor phase or hot air or infrared, it has to be heated up so that the solder paste melts and becomes a metal. And so we have to go back to our bucket of processing. And it's now a reflow oven. And I'm going to take my assembled multi-layer board now with its big components and its little components. I'm going to put that in here and it's very hot so I have to be careful not to burn myself. And it comes out and everything comes out reflowed. And it's then looks something like this. Okay, and that's ready to go into the uh, the end computer or uh, other type of electronic hardware. And that's it. So that's how you can describe how to build a printed circuit support assembly with just common stuff you can find around IPC headquarters. Thank you very much.